Welcome back sewing friends. I've had lots of requests to do some men's patterns and today we are going to start off July in the pool with a men's board short. This is a traditional men's swim trunk or board short. It is the um, Serena Andrew swimsuit 2034. This is a PDF. I will link it below. I got it off of Etsy. I've never sewn with it before, but it does come in English and Spanish, which is really nice. Um, and it looks like a good traditional pattern. It even has a couple different pockets on the side, like where you could throw your keys or something like that while you're swimming if you needed to. I got this off of Etsy. This is our fabric. Look at this great, it came in a couple different colors. This is meant for swimwear um, and they had a lot of options in this particular shop so I will link that below so you can look. Look at the vibes of that, that nice tropical pink and um, soft blue and a little khaki in there and then look at the selvage edge of that. Can you see? Look at the stripe on that. I am cutting the selvage off and I'm going to be using it for something because that is too cool to waste. That's going to be a trim someday on something. It's really neat. You will also need a mesh for the lining of the swimsuit. This came from Amazon. Again, I'll link it below for you and good traditional mesh like you would use for sports jerseys and lots of things. And then you're going to need elastic and you're going to need a drawstring. Now you could make your own, you could use super long shoestrings. There's lots of options for that. I bought a um, drawstring set. It was very inexpensive, I think $7. Amazon, I'll link it below. It's got black and white. They're like hoodie replacement um, drawstrings, but it's also the perfect length for the project that we're doing. My only concern is it has little metal aglets on it, and we'll see how those hold up in the water. Um, it does come even with a little threader for threading it through. If you lose your um, hoodie drawstring, you can rethread it, but it might be practical for this project or others, so I'm kind of happy about that for a few um, dollars kind of a nice little bargain. So those are our uh, things that we will need today. I will be doing this whole project in a men's medium. It fits both of my fellas. It would actually fit, fit quite a few of the gals in my life. And I'm making this just to have as an extra swimsuit at our house in case somebody comes over to swim and they need don't have the suit and they wanna borrow one and jump in the pool. We've got an extra suit or two around. I've been, I am still in the process of tracing it off. So I'm gonna finish tracing and then we'll, I'll show you um, cutting out and we'll get sewing. We're gonna start by cutting out the inner brief out of mesh. It should be stretch mesh and you want this stretch crosswise. This is our little stretch thing. So stretch goes this way. It's on the fold. Pretty basic, that's it. So I'm going to cut this out first and then we'll go on to the outer fabric. I'm moving on to my fabric to start cutting out the outer short part and I want to show you that this stripe is uneven. So the pattern's not the same top to bottom. So I have to really watch because I'm gonna match the stripe up that I don't flip my pattern pieces because it will definitely not match up even though it looks like it should because it has a khaki stripe top and bottom but see the khaki is next to blue here. The khaki's next to pink here. There's only this one section of this darker blue. So gotta pay attention for matching our stripe. I'm showing you, there's my back. There's my front. You can see how far apart they are. That's because I'm lining up my stripes and I cannot stack them one on top of each other and I cannot get them side by side. So to start, I'm lining up my fabric nice and neat, just Fold it over enough to get the widest piece, which is the back. And then I'm lining up my stripes very carefully and I'll check at the other end too so that they're the same for both right and left when I cut out the back. I'm going to transfer a few lines onto this other pattern piece so that I can line it up so that it matches up at the side seam. Because of the line placement, there's no way to get them next to each other with the other, which is why I bought um, an extra half yard, I believe. A fabric I bought which is like one repeat I sort of bought one extra repeat just to make sure I had enough to get it all in I think I will end up using this middle part to get my waistband out of and of course I have pocket pieces which will probably be cut out of this though I have to think I have one pocket that's going to show a lot tiny bit that I may want to get on this stripe too lots to consider Here's the back pinned down so you can kind of see my stripe variation. And now I'm going to take my front and lay it on top and line up my side seam and I'm going to transfer the lines onto this so that now I can come down here 
and get everything lined up perfectly. It'll line up at the side seam. The fronts will line up because I have these lined up. The backs will line up and it'll all work out. It's hard to see, but here's my little lines that I've transferred from that side seam so I know they line up perfectly. And now I'm going to take those lines and I'm going to use them to get this lined up just right so everything's perfect and I'm looking and look at this. Now there, this the way this is printed, it's actually printed by how much you buy and I am off, I mean, three eighths of an inch. The good thing is that's in the hem. Now it's, it ha doesn't change the weight of the fabric or anything else. So I'm gonna have to just live with this little thing here being turned up and in, hidden in the hemline underneath. It won't show so that I can get all of my lines nice and neat. The other consideration I made is I wanted this darker area with the stripes kind of across the crotch area. I think it's just better, uh, it's going to look better, but also sometimes lightweight things like this get a little bit transparent in the water and this will help that not happen by putting this darky, darker area with stripes on it there. Okay, now to lay out the rest. We have two pockets to cut out. One of them fills in this little corner. It's this pocket piece here, number four. So I'm gonna lay that on top of here and I'm gonna transfer a few of these lines and then see if I can't place it up, um, somewhere in all of this, um, including up in here, so that I can get that lined up perfectly. If not, it could just be solid pink behind there, but it would look nice if I could get all of this lined up in the pocket. This one will not show at all, so I'm gonna make it solid pink and then I don't have to worry about any of these lines shadowing through. Still cutting out, I have traced off, I only need one back pocket. I've matched up my lines, so here's my back pocket. This should fit on the right side, hopefully. Yeah, I did it right, so I have a back pocket on the right. There's its flap. You can see they're slightly skewed. They're not perfectly on grain. That is because when the pant is on grain, the stripe is at slight angle, and I want that angle on my pocket so everything lines up. Um, in the back, so there I need two flaps, one back pocket, so those are lined up and ready to go. My waistband, I'm going to do out of this stripe. It fits perfectly where I folded it, fortunately. Um, and then this is on here, ready to go. I have a big space right there. I almost thought about just cutting these out and refolding, but what I'm gonna do is take that piece and lay it on here to cut out my two pockets that fill in that corner, and then all that will be left will be cutting two of the other sides of the pockets, which I'm gonna get in this pink space and hopefully this pink space. We'll see if it works out. Well, I'm finally ready to sew. I started working on this at 8.30 this morning and I have had interruption after interruption. Does anyone else have that when they're trying to get something done? That has been me. I've left the house four times today. Just one of those days. So it's now, uh, like 2.30 in the afternoon, I'm finally getting to sit down to sew. And it's storming. We got a surprise storm, so the lighting's weird. It's a little dark in here. It just is what it is. But we're now we're ready to actually put these, these swim trunks together. We're going to take pattern piece one, which is our front, and pattern piece five. We're going to pin them right sides together up here at the pocket line like this and sew it half an inch. This pattern has half inch seam allowance. So we're gonna sew this straight stitch it on half an inch. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to serge this raw edge of the two pieces together. I'm not serging off my excess. I'm leaving my seam allowance, at least for the pocket part. Um, and that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and just sew all of that real quick together, half inch. If you've been sewing a lot lately, it may be time to change your needle. I just did it on my machine, so I'm gonna remind you too. You may need to do a needle change. Right now, I'm sewing with regular sewing thread, a polyester, because it will take the chlorine and stuff of the water a little better. And I'm using a 90, size 90 or 14 needle. You may want to consider doing a needle swap now. If you hear pop, pop, pop when you're sewing, your needle's dull, and or it has a burr and it needs to go. The rule used to be, and I'm assuming it still is, eight hours of sewing, and that's eight hours of the machine operating, is as long as a needle can last, often, and you should too. You'll have better, you'll have less likely to have skip stitches and other issues or catch a run in your nice fabric, so change that needle. I also went ahead and oiled my machine before I'm starting. I use it. It needs a little TLC. Thank you. 
If you have a hard time remembering your seam allowance, put a little piece of washi tape or something next to the seam allowance you're using and then you don't have to worry about accidentally um, sewing on your 5 eighths when this only has half. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and serge that edge. If you don't have an overlock, go ahead and zigzag that edge and get it seam finished. I'm gonna take a picture so you can see what it looks like up close. So that's step one. We are now going to go to step two. We're gonna take our other pocket piece. Now this is the one that I tried lining up my stripes with, so we'll see how good of a job I did. We'll find out real quick. I'm thinking I'm going to turn on, I have not been using my, my ring light because it gives me migraines. Someday, when I can afford it, I'm gonna get a second camera to do down shots and make life so much easier and make it so much easier to show for me to show you these things but for now I have my wide shots there and I film with my phone otherwise. Steps to under stitch. Okay you can press this fabric be careful there it, um, it definitely has a little treatment to it for the chlorine and for the UV so we're I'm just finger pressing this down carefully and then I am going to stitch on the pocket side right next to that seam line. So we're going to understitch. Here's the pocket, here's the shorts, and I've pressed it flat. Here's the seam where they're sewn together, and we are lining up. Now I have my um, quarter inch foot, so this inside toe here is eighth of an inch. I can move it all the way over like that and get it right on the edge, but I don't have to be that picky. We just want to get it so that it holds, and I, I will tell you, the seam allowance is pressed towards the pocket. So when I stitch this, I am stitching through pocket and seam allowance, getting it lined up. Take a couple stitches, back stitch. Sorry about my thumb. Now we're just gonna stitch down. So we're gonna understitch both pockets. All right, now that we've understitched both pockets, we are going to take our pocket pieces here, the other pocket piece, which is piece number four. We're gonna lay them right sides together, and we are going to sew around that and serge around that. Now I'm gonna just serge around it and not do both. The thing is we just wanna marry these two pocket pieces to each other. And if you want to straight stitch it and then zigzag around it, you can. I'm just gonna serge it. This fabric is a little hard to pin into and it might be one that would be good to use clips on because it's sort of rubbery a little bit. So here's my pattern piece four. It has the stripes. Here's my skirt, my skirt, my shorts, my trunks. And then there's the pattern piece we just sewed on right here. Pattern piece five, I think. It just fell on the floor. So we're going to now go around this pocket. We're gonna start up here, we're gonna go all the way around the curve, and we're gonna end here. Don't worry about the little straight area yet. This is step three. We're doing step three. And then I'm gonna fold it back and see how well I did on lining up my uh, stripes. So now, once that's sewn on, if we fold the pocket towards the front, this new pocket piece that we've just added, can you see how they line up? Okay, I'm gonna put a, put a pin in it so it stays in place. And I'll go ahead and do the other one. Okay, let's talk about doing the back or the little side patch pocket for a minute. It requires, or it re 
recommends Velcro so that you can Velcro shut the flap and keep whatever's in your pocket in it while you're swimming. Now you're not going to most likely swim with your wallet or your phone. You may use a hotel key or something like that. I, I find that most people don't put a lot in their pockets when swimming, so a pocket's more for cute than it is for function. If you want to do the pocket on the side, where it's on the side of the leg, kind of like a cargo short, you need to sew together that side seam. So you need a front and a back for whichever side. So you need either a right and left front, right front and back, or a left front and back for whichever side you want to stick it on. I think they show it on the left, um, on the model, um, but it's up to you. I'm going to put it in my on the back. So. I'm going to now, looking at their directions, they have us make the pocket flap, which I'm not going to do because I really don't want it. I just don't want that flap. I, I cut it all out. I don't think I want it. I don't think I'm interested in even having it on there. I'm just going to do a plain patch pocket in the back. So I'm going to surge around my main pocket piece to um, seam finish it. Piece six. I will tell, and it's, and, it's cut slightly off grain and I'm hoping, and it's just to get it to line up and the stripes to look nice when it goes on. So I have an off grain pocket <laughs> um, for decoration purposes only, but I'm gonna surge all the way around this thing. So let me see finish this real quick. my wonky pocket. And then they show sewing the side seam together if you're going to be doing the side seam pocket, which I am not. So that's step six. I'm not gonna do step six because I want to do the back pocket. Making the pocket pieces, pocket flap, is step seven and eight and nine. And what they have you use, you interface one of those and that's the one that you're gonna sew your Velcro to, the one that you interface because it makes it sturdier. My experience is with stuff like this, having a husband and a son who wears things like this, if they have something that's Velcroed and they open it and close it a lot, it ends up just shredding the fabric around where the Velcro was sewn on because the Velcro is so stable and sturdy and the fabric is not, at some point it all starts to come apart. I will just tell you, if I were doing, if I decided to do the flap instead of doing Velcro, I probably would do a um, little short drawstring looking tie on the pocket part and have them poke through little holes and tie shut in the back because I think it would be so stinking cute. And I know guys don't want cute and adorable, but I'm just saying it would look really nice. It would look a little more high fashion, a little more upscale. It also looks a little nautical. I think I would prefer that look to the, um, to the Velcro, but if you are going to be wearing these in heavy surf or heavy water and you know you're gonna be putting stuff in your pocket, Velcro it shut. It's the safest way to keep what's in there in there and safe. All that said, we are now going to skip all the way to, I always deviate. If you've sung with me before, you know this, 11. So there are little eyelet locations where they are actually sewing or um, using metal type eyelets on the pocket to make it nice and sturdy. I will not be doing that again. Eventually the fabric just completely falls apart. You have the eyelet left and nothing around it. I'm not going to be putting eyelets in, but if you are, you need to interface where those eyelets are going to go. I'm just going to be stitching mine on. I may do some double stitching or some decorative stitching, but I will not be doing an eyelet. So if you are, you need to mark your eyelets. That's step 11 where they show marking your eyelets. What I am going to do is mark where I need to fold down my pocket to stitch it shut. I normally will fold this around like this. So it's right side together and I will sew this little side, the half inch first, and then flip it around and then that whole edge is finished off nice and then ready to be top stitched and finished. So that's what I'm going to do. It has good markings so you know where to put everything. If you want the eyelets, it's on there for you. All right, here's my pocket turned down. I've folded it down what I need and now I'm going to just stitch it at the half inch mark. I'm going to do that for both sides. All right, so here's my little pocket folded in half. Now I'm going to flip this around like this 
and you can see how it starts to fold in those edges. So when you fold it around, that's how it, see how it folds everything in and makes it nice and neat. Now we're gonna flip it over and top stitch across. Oh, those wonky stripes. So I'm going to be stitching at about one inch. Now if you don't have a serger, you could fold up that edge, do like the double folded edge so that it's self finished on the inside, or you can zigzag it. I would probably um, self finish it. All right, so now I have a pocket and now I'm ready to find my back piece. It has markings um, on the pattern for whether you want to put it on the back or whether you want to put it on the side. So I'm going to put mine on the back. The directions only show sewing it on the side. They show it, view A has it on the back, but they don't really show the directions for doing it. So I guess I'm kind of glad I'm showing you. We're going to take our back pant and it has markings for where the pocket should go. It has two that are for the side and then it has another one that is for the back one. I hold this up. These little markings here are for if you're doing the side pocket that goes this way. And over here, this is for the upper pocket and the flap. I'm not doing the flap, but you can see this little bass with the corner. Now, personally, you can put the pocket on the right or the left. More people are right-handed than left-handed, so you will more often see it on the right. But if you are a left-handed person, you're more likely to want to put your wallet or whatever on the left side. I'm a right-handed person. I, I go to put things in my right side pocket. You want to put it on the left side of your body. So you think about that. Think about how you'll wear it and how it would work for you, and that's what you're going to do. Okay, so I realized as I was lining that up that I actually cut out the pocket for the left side of the body. So here's the pant, here's the pocket. <laughs> so I'm going to fold under these half inch all the way around and stitch it. Here is my flap that I also cut out that if I were going to make the flap, it would have also disappeared right into all of that. Would have been really cute. I just don't want it. but. I have it. I could always add it, I guess, if I decide that I need it. I'm going to pin this down and show you how it looks stitched on. We're gonna sew on the pocket. This is the top of my pocket, and I'm going to make the little triangle at the top. So I'm starting just over the edge a little bit. It's about one stitch over. I'm gonna sink my needle right on the hemline. Okay, that's where we're starting. To this pin, and we're going to make a little triangle at the top, not very big. I'm sewing at a slight angle. I'm going to get up here close to the top, and it depends on your stitch length. So, can you see the angle there? Sinking, sinking the needle really makes a difference. And now that gives us a little extra reinforcement. You can see I'm lining up my folded edge with the inside of my toe of my foot. And there you can you see it? There we go. And because I um, did the little turn down thing at the top before we started stitching, whoops, almost went past it, it makes this edge nice and smooth. my stitches. It's three stitches. One, two, three. And now we'll come back in. All right. Okay, so here's my little corners and my top stitching. And there's my pocket. Now that we have a back pocket, we're going to go ahead and put a right and a left leg together. So we're going to take the front and the backs and then we're going to sew them together at the side seam and the inseam. For me, because I did this stripe, I'm really trying hard to match up my stripes on the side seam. 
they are not going to match perfectly on the inseam and I didn't even really try. They're close, but they're not perfect. And it's the one place that's, you're not gonna see as much. So I'm now just gonna sew side seam. There's the pocket and inseam together. We're gonna have a right and a left. So we're going to do that now. And I am sewing half inch and then I'm gonna come back and just serge that outer edge. If you want to, you could serge off your excess seam allowance. I tend to leave the extra seam allowance because it allows for alterations, fittings, etc. if you need to. I won't necessarily on this garment. Side seam. And then we surge. So we have one leg and this is the one with the pocket. Now I'm going to flip it so you can see. There's my side seam. So it's perfect at the bottom and it gets off just a little bit at the top. It's not horrible and actually if you look it matches up here to here but just inside that pocket it's off just a wee bit. It's really not terrible though and we can live with it. I could have, if I'd had enough fabric, I could have just made this whole back pocket piece, um, both pieces of the pocket all pink, but I didn't have enough fabric to do that. So we're gonna make both legs. When you're pinning and sewing, you should have this little corner. I'm gonna show you a little picture of it in the crotch. Okay, so we're at the crotch on the inseam. From one side it looks like this, but the back crotch, the way the crotch wings meet, you should have this little corner that shows it meets perfectly right at the seam allowance. I'm going to put a picture up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And if you get this, that means you did it right. And I want to make sure and tell you before I search that area because it makes it a little, it's a little harder to see with the surging and everything on there. Okay, let's trim up some threads. You're now ready to do step 17, which is the mesh. Now it has, it says, so you know what size elastic to measure this curve right here. You need to measure that so you know what to cut your elastic to. You're going to cut it one inch smaller. I measured mine. Mine was 25 and a half inches, which means I will cut my elastic around 24 inches. A one inch, one inch is not that big of a change. This is the mesh. So we're going to, so there is a right and a wrong, believe it or not. And you want the right side of this, in this case, to be against the body. So we're going to put, you're going to put right sides together sew it on the half inch. I'm going to serge mine together and I'm going to serge off the excess seam allowance. When we go to put this in, the right side of this will be against the body and the raw edges will be into the um, facing the the short. I actually I had my brain on backwards there for a minute but I'm I'm back in business. This does have a right and a wrong. I do not know if it'll show up on the camera but you can feel it. If you do not have a serger, just zigzag this. Just zigzag it together on the half inch. This would make great swimsuit cover-up fabric too. It came in lots of colors. But here is where the excess is coming off. Boy, that's that hard to see. And I'm just serging this at half an inch. We're gonna go ahead and cut our elastic. We are going to use 3 8 inch elastic. It says we're gonna cut it one inch shorter than the measurement. I'm gonna cut mine an inch and a half shorter, 24 inches for me. So I'm gonna cut two pieces because I have two legs. As a rule, these are not real tight on the inside. If you wanna know where I get these giant spools of elastic, I think I have them linked in my Amazon store. If not, I'll add them to it. This I have a quarter inch, three eighths inch, and one and a quarter inch, which is the one we're going to be using for the waistband. I think it calls for one and a half. I have one and a quarter and we're gonna make it work. We are going to just sew that around this little circle of our leg. We're gonna make a circle out of it first. You could have, you totally could have sewn this around the thing and then done your side seam. It isn't, it's not quite as nice of a finish, but it's certainly possible, certainly something you could do. I'm gonna overlap these, make sure you don't get it twisted. So it's nice and flat. We're gonna overlap it a half inch and you can zigzag or straight stitch it, but you wanna keep it nice and secure. I always do lots of back stitching on this. 
it's still it's going to get surged in now if you don't have a serger you'll zigzag this in and we're going to put this in our little leg so here's my leg my little overlap I'm going to just pin it down here so we're going to quarter this we're just pinning this to get it evenly spaced or pretty close to evenly spaced and then we're going to i'm going to surge around it you can zigzag it and then i don't know if they turn and stitch it or if they just leave it a lot of times when you buy swim trunks they're just surged in and that's it so with a zigzag stitch or overlock stretching as necessary there will not be a lot of stretching because this is they've only taken out between the overlap and what they reduce just just two inches so there's very little stretching to be done i am just going to surge around this edge this is how it looks i know it's a little hard to see because it's weird and holy but i'm going to start at the inseam in the crotch that's where i'm going to start here we are with our little inner briefs this is the right side this is the wrong side, there's my overlap. This is the crotch, down at the bottom of the crotch, and that's where I'm gonna start sewing. So I, where that pin was, I put it in there, sunk my needle so it's nice and tight. We're not surging off anything. I'm just gonna get a couple stitches going so it's strong. And then you can see I can just gently pull this, keeping it straight. You'll do the same thing at the sewing machine. I don't have to pull very much, because there's not a lot. I always sink my needles just in case. And we're just gonna go around just like that, gently stretching as we go. And it'll look like this. And that's all we have to do. You don't have to do any more to this because it's the lining. Both legs. There's one leg, this is the wrong side. And there's the right side, and I'm telling you, it doesn't pull it in much at all with only reducing it that little amount. And I reduced mine a little bit more, but that's how it looks. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other leg. We've got our little briefs made, our little lining. Looks like this. And I'm going to, right now, this is right side around. I'm gonna flip it around because when I go to sew it in, it's going to be wrong side out. That's how it's going to get sewn in, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it. I'm going to take my two pant pieces. I'm going to have one that is wrong side out and one that is right side out. And I'm going to take the right side out one and slide it into the wrong side out one. We're going to line them up at the crotch seam. I'm lining them up at the inseam in the crotch. And then we're going to come up to the top. And my stripes are matching up perfectly, which is real important to me. Um, I, they weren't perfect right in the pocket, which is not quite as bad as it's center front and center back. It would be re really bad if they didn't line up there. I'm gonna pin more than normal just to keep those stripes on target. If you s decide to sew this out of a tropical print or a solid or something like that, not a stripe, this is a very fast sew. You could really whip up quite a few pair of swim trunks and you could use this pattern. You could eliminate the lining and just make shorts out of it. It has two pant lengths, or two lengths. Um, I'm making the longer of the two, but they're not the super long, like I think the traditional old board short was pretty long. It's not as long as that. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around at half an inch, and then I'm gonna come back and serge it on the edge. Um, I might serge it in a little bit so that it, we don't have a full half inch seam allowance in there. I might serge it down a little bit, just so it's a little more comfortable not to have all of that seam allowance up against the body. All right, so this is how it's going to look um, pinned together and we're ready to sew. Normally seam allowance is all pressed towards the back, so like your center front will press open, your side seams will press towards the back. At this crotch seam, I have one pressed forward, one pressed backwards. So here is the crotch, and you can see I have the seam allowance going in opposite directions to make it nice and smooth right there. Um, that means when I go to hem the legs, one will be pressed towards the front and one will be pressed towards the back when I'm hemming, but it does make for a much smoother, nicer crotch line if you choose to do it that way.
it makes it less lumpy and bumpy right there where the pants all come together. And of course, when we come back and serge it here in a minute, it'll be even better. Before I serge it though, I'm going to check all of my um, lines and make sure everything lines up pretty and looks good. Okay, let's see if anything shifted. So here's center front, dead on. I love that when that happens. Here's center back. Oh yeah, all good. Can you see that? Looks great, very pleased. Okay, now I'm gonna serge it. Going to give these a gentle press. We are up to that was step 20 that we just did. And the next thing they have us do is hem. So I'm going to go ahead and press everything and I'm going to press my hem up and we're going to put the hem in. Love that. All right, I am turned up my half inch. I am sewing just inside that half inch. I'm starting in the inseam um, where it's going to show less where I cross my stitches. I'm going to, I've got hem clips in holding it together. They work great for this sort of application set so of pins. This stuff is a little rough to pin into. It's sort of, I don't know, a little bit rubbery and the pins just sort of bounce out. Pull off a pin. And we're just gonna hem around. This is a circle, so if you forget to back stitch, it doesn't matter because you're gonna come back around and you can stitch back over your old stitches. Here's my half inch mark and you can see I am stitching, whoops, here's my half inch mark and you can see I'm stitching just inside that so that I'm just catching the folded edge of the pant. Okay, we're ready to work on the waistband. Here's my hemmed pants here. We're going to mark the little spot here where the um, opening is going to be for the drawstring. I'm going to sew in, I'm not going to do a little grommet or a little um, eyelet. I'm going to sew in a buttonhole for mine, so I'm putting some interfacing down on those little spots. I have them marked right there. So we're just gonna interface behind it for a buttonhole. We're getting very close to putting everything all together. We are up to step 22. I've already put in a little interfacing behind it. Either way, you need some interfacing. I'm just gonna sew two tiny little buttonholes side by side. On my machine, I just hit the back button when I get it to the size I want. Which is not going to be very big. Whoops. Let's get this thread out of the way. I think that's about as big as I want. I just want a tiny little hole. So that's all the bigger I made it, which is about exactly what I wanted. Okay, so now I'm going to line it up and do the other one. All right, I'm going to take my buttonhole foot off. Set my machine back to a straight stitch. And step 23, which is just sewing this together. So we're going to line up whoop, this way. Do not need to serge this. It just needs sewn together at the half inch. Let's make sure my stripes look good. This will be the back of the waistband. So there's my stripes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and press this open and I'm going to sew in my label. And you wanna make sure you sew the label on the side that will be on the inside unless you want 
you know you want your label on the outside all right so now that I've done that let's see where my two little okay where my buttonholes are so this side is the inside so that's where I'm gonna stick my label so here we are we have a waistband I'm going to go ahead and cut open my little buttonholes there's lots of ways you can do this. I do have a buttonhole cutter, but it is about a half an inch, which is bigger than my little holes that I made. So I also have an awl, but I think it's too wide. So I think I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way with, so let's cut open our little holes real quick. And then we're going to fold this in half. So we're going to now fold this in half and just press it all the way around. So I'm just folding it wrong sides together, exactly in half, matching up our raw cut edges. And we're just going to give it a quick press. And then it says, fold the waistband in half, wrong sides together. We did it, press. Then on the inner edge of the waistband where you don't have eyelets, so the wrong side, we're going to press up half an inch one side will will be longer than the other because this one's going to get pressed up and that is getting us prepped for now it says where you don't have eyelets but when you look at the picture they show it the opposite if you look at the picture the way they show it it looks like it looks the opposite we are going to be folding up the wrong side half an inch and pressing that and then we will be ready to pin our waistband on. We are now going to sew our waistband on. We're gonna open it back up and we'll need the mesh in a minute. So we're going to take our waistband, we're going to take our center back and line it up with the back of the short, right sides together, and then we'll find our center front, which should be right between your two little eyelets there. Mark that, line it up with the front of our short. Now we're matching Pin only the front part of the base waistband where you place the eyelets. I'm going to figure this out real quick on my own and we'll let you know. I'm just sitting here thinking about this. I know there's a way where they sew this so that you can sew the waistband in one, one section and it flips through the brief. Um, but they're not, they're sewing it in two sections and still flipping it through. We're just going to sew the waistband on right now and not worry about the brief. The decision, that's the executive decision I'm making. So in step 25, we're pinning the waistband on. We're pinning only right side to right side. We're leaving it open with the little folded up. So we're gonna just stitch around half an inch. Here's to me, once you sew the waistband on and it says fold inside, I don't know why they're doing it. I just don't understand. I'm misunderstanding something, I'm sure. But it almost appears to me that they are sewing the brief to this side of the waistband, then flipping it all in. But it's already, it appears to have already been completely finished off. So if you have a completely finished waistband and then try and add the lining, that does not make sense to me, but that's what it looks like in the pictures. The thing that we're not seeing that I am uncertain about is all of this raw stuff. So it, normally we've, we take all of this raw part of the waist up here, goes up. This part of the waistband comes down with the raw folded up and it's all finished off on the inside nothing no raw edges right but we need to get the brief inside there the easy way would be to just pin the brief in and top stitch around so i'm sure this is me not understanding what they're wanting us to do but we need to make a decision here do we want to do the surge and flip through thing or do we want to insert it inside and have it all finished off on the inside. And we also, 
still have to get elastic in here. So we're going to have to leave an opening somewhere because we still have to put in our elastic. So this is the time to make an executive decision as the person who is sewing this garment and saying, how do I want this done? I am going to take my, my briefs wrong side out, okay? The, the right side's on the inside. And I'm going to pin it in to my, to my shorts here. I'm going to match up side seam to side seam. Make sure you get the back in the back and the front in the front. And I'm going to pin that in to what I've just sewn of the waistband. There's, there are a lot of ways of doing this. And my goal for you is to not leave you frustrated over this and, uh, and for you to feel good about the project when you're done and that it fits and that you're happy. So we're going to just tuck all that in. It fits perfectly. Everything fits together great. The pattern making is very good on this. I kind of wish I would have gone with my first instinct on this. I'm just telling you, kind of regretting that I didn't. So here we are with our waistband attached on the outside. We've tucked in the brief the liner on the inside. This is the right side of the liner. That's what we want touching our skin. So when you look on the inside, you cannot see the seam other than looking through the holes, but the seam is, is touching the wrong side of the short. Okay. So that's what it's like on the inside. It's all pinned together. Now I'm going to double check that the back of my brief is in the back and the front of my brief is in the front. We sure don't want that in backwards. Okay, now that we've done that and it's pinned in, I'm going to actually flip my pins the opposite direction. I want my heads down and my points up because I'm going to flip the waistband around now. And when we sew this waistband, I'm going to leave an opening in the center back to put the elastic in. We could have easily caught this when we sewed the waistband. There was no reason not to do it that way if we wanted to. Okay, so now it's all pinned in. I'm going to now fold this waistband over. All of that seam allowance is coming up and the waistband is coming over and I'm going to fold it down so it's, it meets the seam. All right, we are doing this whole adding the mesh. So what I've decided to do, this is the right side of my mesh and this is the wrong side. Wrong side mesh to wrong side of short. Everything's lined up center front, center back, pinned in. Then we're coming along and we are folding down that waistband. We're going to fold down that waistband to the half inch. I'm going to put more pins in it. So it's going to fold down like this and it's catching all those layers. And then I'm going to flip it over to this side and I'm just going to top stitch the whole waistband around and it's going to catch all the layers at once. I'm going to leave a little opening. I'm going to start and stop in the center back. So I have a little opening to slip my elastic in and then we can feed through the drawstring. So I'll, we're going to get this sort of pinned together and I'll show you how it looks. Okay. We are working on the brief. I have pinned the brief to the inside. It would have been much easier to catch this all at once. And then this brief wouldn't be loose in there like this, but we're pinning it in. We're folding this over. And then we're going to come to this side and we're going to top stitch along this edge. Now, if you line everything up, it'll catch all the layers. We're going to start right here. This is our center back. I'm going to start right here and I'm going to sew around and stop over here. So I have this little hole that I can fish my elastic through and I can also fish through my uh, drawstring at the same time if I want to. And then I'll show you how to finish that off. But we're going to go ahead and just do the top stitching right now. All right, friends, we are now stitching. So I'm top stitching. You can see, oop, focus. You can see how close I am to the, my folded edge. This is how it looks when it stitches. And from the inside, we're catching all the layers. And I will stop way over here so that I have a little hole on the inside to fish through my elastic. All right, whenever I sew something, I check it over before I move on to make sure that something didn't slip or move, and we did. I'm gonna just flip this over. This part of the lining flipped out and stitched right through it, so I'm going to rip out this little section, tuck the lining back in. If you sew the lining on with the waistband in step, step 24, if you put the lining on at that time, this won't happen, this is much less likely to happen to you. So we're gonna, rip out this little section and fix it. And of course, it's in the front. It only ever happens in the front. We have got shorts that are finished and lined with a back pocket. 
So I'm going to get my elastic here. Kind of wishing I had a wider elastic because this is a wide waistband and this is, anyway, I probably would have liked a long, wider elastic. And uh, since I'm doing this for generic size, these are um, medium, which is like a 32, 34. So I think I'm gonna cut my elastic at 30. And I need a safety pin. We're gonna take our safety pin and we are going to go to the back of our pants on the inside where we left that little hole and we're gonna start fishing our elastic through. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd made another channel, but anyway, it is what it is. We're gonna fish our elastic through. I guess I could always go back and add it if I think I need it. Because the elastic is shorter than the waistband, I always take the other end and I just pin it down. So the inside kind of see there's just, it's pinned. And then I can just keep fishing my elastic around. And when it comes out the other side, we'll sew it together. So this is step 29. We are very close to done. And then I'm gonna go eat pizza and then I'll take. I kind of wish I had made a second channel kind of at the top so that it held the elastic. Um, since the elastic is much narrower than the waistband. Cut a piece of cord 20 inches longer than your waist. It's because you need ties. So I bought drawstring that I think is 52 inches. It's gonna be really long probably. We'll see, I'll have to look at it. It's hoodie, it's for hoodies but I think it should be fine. I must have missed this. I'm gonna go back and look. There must have been somewhere where they told us to leave a hole that I did not see. Let's look, let's see what Stacy missed. Okay friends, all the way back in step 23 when we sew our waistband together in the center back, they have you leave a hole in the center back of the waistband for doing this instead of doing um, it the way I'm showing you. So. They 100% do tell you to leave a hole. I just totally missed it. And it's in step 23. They leave it in the back in this seam instead of in the finished part of the waistband. We're gonna take our elastic ends. We're gonna overlap them and stitch them together. And then we'll suck them in and finish off this waistband. We're overlapping and stitching this elastic. I always do lots of back stitches. You can zigzag or straight stitch, doesn't really matter. I'm overlapping about three quarters of an inch. We just don't want it to let go. Now I can just suck that whole thing in and then I'm going to smooth out the elastic in the center back and I'm going to sew shut where I left it open, that little area, and then we'll fish through our drawstring. Okay, so here we are. Okay, drawstring. Do 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 do. Now, since it has these nice metal aglets, it should be pretty easy to fish it through. You definitely can see the mesh through this. Definitely can. Quite sheer. These may not get worn. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to top stitch around this to keep the elastic in place and to keep. I think I'm going to. I'm going to take this out. So before I go any farther. I'm going to push my elastic down, and you could do this at a different step, and I'm going to top stitch around the top of this about a half an inch down, making sure to not catch the elastic, keeping the elastic down. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute, but it's gonna keep the elastic in place and kind of make a channel right there, so I'm gonna set that a half inch. All right, I like it better already. Okay, so now I put a channel around it. It keeps the elastic from floating around. It keeps it closer to where it belongs. It kind of creates a ruffle across the top. Of course, when wearing it, that would disappear. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna fish my, fish this through and then there's nothing to this. It just sits right on top of the elastic. And then I'll come back and show you how it looks finished, so. Just gonna push this through and go eat some pizza and I'll be back in a little bit. So, super cute, the pattern's well done, everything fits together really well. I did skip the pocket flap and a few things. I found the directions for doing the waistband, combining with the brief, inner brief 
flipping through thing confusing. I thought that um, if I were to do it again, I would pin the brief and the waistband all together and do that. Sew all of those layers together, then flip the waistband over and top stitch and finish it. I think that that would be easier than um, the multi steps that I did do it. And I know there is another way where you can. Um, where it is all sewn and then flipped through the leg and caught on the inside, you can sort of sometimes see some of that through the mesh if you do it that way. I, theirs look like a combination of the two, but I could not figure out how they were doing it or what they were doing. So there we go. I, I do like it though. I think it's a really cute pattern. The one thing I see that I did that you probably will not be able to see on, t on the video is that um, it's very sheer and you can see the mesh even against the body the mesh shows through you can see the mesh right through it so that's a fabric choice problem I would go with a darker or patterned fabric or something like that that would not shadow through because you know white things when they get wet really tend to become sheer so these may only get worn as a short and may not get worn to swim in because of that. Like the fabric, I think this is excellent fabric. And they did have this fabric in sort of this dark blue as the main color. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I remembered. So anyway, I, linking below, you can go look at all the different fabric options they have. There's some others out there from Etsy, really cute. I will go take it over there and um, show you on the dress form. All right, so here they are. They're too big for this little dress form, but I still stuffed them on there so you could see them on a body of some kind. I think it's a great pattern. It's well made. Um, I think the waistband and um, applying the little inner brief thing is confusing. I did add another channel here because the elastic was just so narrow for the over two inch wide waistband. So it looks a little ruffled because it's on such a narrow waist but it wouldn't on um, someone who it fit so here it is from the side I really tried to get my lines pretty close they're not perfect the back pocket's pretty stinking close in the back seam can you see I'm gonna see if I can get this where you can see it I don't know if it's gonna show up in the camera but you can see through and see the mesh behind that is uh, the fabric choice that I made and probably wasn't the best one. Thanks for sewing with me. See you next week for another fun video. If you like my cute top, I have a video on it. Click the i card.